Hey there, what's up? It's Infimensional, and today we're talking about researching the Rogue Thrones. It's the newest event. It just dropped today on a Thursday of all days. A little bit weird there, so we're kind of scrounging, figuring things out. But we got the info for you. We got what you need. Let's dive into it and start with the patch notes. So we got the patch notes here today, part of the Gateway Quadrant, and this is the event, the Researching the Rogues event has begun. It's going in from until now, so immediately, until Monday, October 4th. So we have a good amount of time to get familiar with this event and get all of the goodies from it and uh, really milk it for all it's worth, which we'll get into what it's worth in a second. So to start off, there's daily login gifts. You can get these by logging on and we'll go over what exactly those gifts are once we get into it. There's the Air Rogue Drone Research Hacking Sites that can be probed down in high sec, low sec, null sec, and W space. So everywhere in space, you will be able to find these sites. These abandoned air observer observation posts contain valuable caches of information and resources, which can be accessed with the help of a data analyzer module. That's right. So this time we're going again with the data analyzer, not relic, but data. There's also the drone outgrowth colony sites. They're appearing again in all areas of space. They are full of hostile drones, which are actually destroyers, but we'll also talk about that when we get to it. And they allow for only T1 frigates and T1 destroyers. You can also do pirate faction frigates, but no T2 anything. So this means no pacifier, no Hakates, no T3Ds, uh, no, you know, uh, Hawks, right? It's just going to be T1 frigates, T1 destroyers, and faction frigates. Um, there is also lucrative awards awaiting capsuleers who investigate either the hacking or combat sites, including new and returning ship skins. I don't know if there's actually any returning ship skins. I think they might actually all be new. Uh, overseer's effects. So these are the large 10 M3 overseer's effects that sell for a variety of ISK to NPC orders. This is going to be the main way you get your money, sort of. Uh, they can be sold for ISK up to NPC orders and skill cerebral accelerators. So it's time, everyone. Take those drugs. Uh, air probing boosters. These are a new and very interesting booster. I am really actually quite excited for them. Right now, they are only time limited. All of them are going to be expiring November 5th, which we'll get into again. Um, but I do actually hope that we see more of these coming in the future because I think they are an awesome new addition to New Eden. There's also rogue drone materials and blueprints and the return of the rare subverted JVN Tech UC-49 drone. And if you're wondering, what the heck is that drone? What is that? I never heard of it. It is essentially the Gecko's little brother. So if you don't know, the Gecko is a omni damage heavy drone that takes a lot of extra bandwidth, but it is very agile. It's very good at tracking. And in general, it's a very good drone. So this is the medium version of that. They're now back on the market and I am actually quite excited to uh, get a lot of these because personally, I do use them um, on some of my fit. There's also the uh, Overmine Rogue Drone Implants. So again, these were long since gone. So these are kind of like the, the very interesting things, right? So these were modules that were part of previous events that are returning. Um, so they uh, were quite expensive. I imagine their price isn't gonna go too down, down too far and these will be limited. So basically we wanna get as many of these as we can through this event. And then even if we don't immediately sell them, we can hoard them, we can wait months, years, forever to uh, then sell them back on the market and make a big profit there. Uh, next it says the combat and hacking sites found within low security space, that's right, low security space, are the most difficult and most rewarding. And they do not joke about this. Low security space is definitely where you want to go. The rewards are heavily favored. Um, and also the combat site is pretty difficult. <laughs> but we'll get into that. There's also no a event reward track. You are familiar with these. If you've done any of the other events, we'll go into it. This one in particular, spoiler alert, it's, it's kind of really bad uh, because it's pretty much impossible to complete. And we'll get into that, why that is in a bit. 
Uh, but it also offers even more boosters and a set of new airship skins. So there is quite a lot of new skins, exciting tech and whatnot uh, in this event. And uh, we'll get into that now, shall we? <laughs> so let's go ahead and move on into EVE Online, everyone's favorite game. And let's see, first we will tackle talking about the um, sites themselves. So we have the combat sites. What the combat sites are is essentially a dead space pocket. You can warp to it. It shows up as a combat anomaly. You just go to it. Once you do warp to it, it does show up on the overview. So if you're trying to be a little stealthy, be aware that people will see if some site has been warped to when it shows up on the overview, especially if you're in low sec. The thing about these gates is that they do restrict the size of ship that can go in them but not the amount of ships that can go into them. So you can bring as many buddies as you want to do these sites. And if you're new or a little bit unskilled, I do actually recommend that. These combat sites are pretty difficult, especially solo. Um, so if you have a buddy, just go with a buddy. It's a lot of fun. You can share the loot. It's all good. Uh, but also if you are in low sec, be aware that if they want to gank you, they can come into your sites and the rats on these sites do point you so be ready for a fight <laughs> um so after that there is the first room and basically wave after wave of these drones come after you there is four main types of drones it's going to be the colony nest scavenger note that this does explosive and kinetic in equal parts and has an omni resist there is the sentinel which is the em and thermal drone it also target paints you uh there is the forger does em and thermal and then the guardian which does kinetic and explosive the guardian does technically self rep but these drones have very little hp it's basically that there's just a big mass of them um to just take out but just something to note is that the overseers do rep themselves if you're trying to like ting them with tiny little damages uh after that you can open a gate into the second room. You go into the second room. There is another uh, wave or two, a few ships. Uh, and then at some point, maybe there's a trigger or something. We haven't quite figured it out. But at some point, the boss will appear, the advanced nest overseer. This guy is not to be trifled with. <laughs> um, he, be, because you can only bring in frigates and destroyers and tech one varieties of that, this guy does a lot of damage. He also does a lot of nooting. He also points you. He also webs you. He does basically everything in the book and a whole lot of damage. He is slightly favored in explosive damage for his damage typing. Uh, but that said, he also doesn't have that much HP. So it's really best to have a plan to nuke him down or be able to uh, rep his very large damage. I think it's like 160 damage and eight gigajoules of nooting pressure is what I've heard. Um, so very very beefy and, and scary. But as soon as you kill him, the site's done. Everything else will go away. You're done, right? So as soon as he comes on the field, immediately switch over to him, nuke him down, and uh, hopefully you will survive. Uh, do be aware that this event site, like all the other event sites, well, all the other event sites, um, it is whoever does the most damage to this final boss gets the credit for it. And only the person who gets the credit for it gets the uh, reward points on the track. And let's, I guess, transition into, what a great segue, into the reward track. So here you can see there is two options to get points. You can either do the combat missions and get <laughs> five points. Um, and you do have to kill that final boss. You have to do the most damage. So another problem is that if you are in a group, it is only the person that actually gets the credit for the kill that's going to get the points. So someone's kind of get screwed. Uh, and then the other thing that you can do is hack not one, but two of the data sites. And you only get five points for that. So if we look, in order to fully complete the track, you need 540. But I guess what's most important for people is probably the air nester skin. So if you're trying to complete this track, you're probably going for the air nester skin. That takes a whopping... 450 points so if we whip out the calculator real quick we do 450 we divide it by five it means we have to do 90 things or because it takes two hacking sites 
to get five points. We can just double that. You're gonna have to do 180 data sites. That's kind of ludicrous. Um, so I personally have already foregone this uh, reward. I don't think it's an incredibly cool looking skin anyways, and it's just gonna be a whole lot more hassle than I think it's worth. You do have a lot of time to do it though, so I guess if you like really are enjoying it, you can definitely get away with that. Uh, other than that, there's just gonna be some agency hard gel drugs, some more air skin laboratory things, and then also these new boosters. Let's talk about the boosters now. They are the Air Astro Range Finding, Pinpointing, and Acquisition Booster. And what these amazing new boosters do is increase the um, scanning stats of your probe launcher. So this one does 15% scan probe time. This one does the probe deviation, and this one does the probe strength. If you're wondering exactly what these do, do check out the other YouTube video that we have. Uh, I'll probably link it down below about the scanning strength that you need. So what this is mostly going to be useful for is if someone is not quite at a breakpoint, you can use these boosters and get to that. So it, so it helps kind of like sure up people that are, I guess, a little bit lacking. Um, the problem with this is that these boosters only last until November 9th. So we only have like a month to use them, maybe a month and a half. Uh, I do really like these boosters. I hope that they come into the game fully forever and that we have some way to manufacture them. I just think that's a, a really cool addition. So hopefully we see something on that front. So next we can talk about the login campaign. So by logging in each and every day, you get rewards. And the alpha track is actually, in my opinion, probably the cooler track this event. You get these skins, these Simeotech sport skins. The thing about these skins is they look really cool and they have some new tech into them. So if you see here, this actually isn't a great example. Maybe we can find another better one. Uh, let's try the Crucifier. Yeah, I think this one looks awesome. So this new skin has all these little accents on it and they actually change color like they reflect how the sun uh, hits them. So if you look at them at different angles, they change color. I think that's just really cool. I don't remember any other skins that have done this. I'm pretty sure that it's a new technology in the world of New Eden. And so I just think these are really cool and I'm, I'm really excited to see what happens in the future about things that are similar to this. Anyways, you get some skins for the Alpha Track. You also get some air boosters. Uh, you And then in the Omega track, you get some agency drugs, some more boosters, some more skill points, you know, general stuff that you're always going to see. And now let's talk about the data site, shall we? So the data sites, <laughs> when this event launched, they were completely non-functional. So no capsuleers could see any of the data sites. We went around for many hours trying to find them. CCP eventually was like, hey, we know we can't see these. Uh, we're working on it. They have been working on it all today. Um, and in doing so, they've actually really mucked up scanning, at least for the day. So basically, whenever you scan something, it like doubles its signatures. So you see like double signatures. It's kind of a hassle. I've pretty much not played today or not used any combat signatures or cosmic signatures today because of it. But we did manage to find some of the data sites to get a good idea of what's going on there. And we can kind of extrapolate from there. So when you go to the site and the layout is the same for all of the sites, you warp into it. You're about 30 kilometers away from a single can, one can. That's right. You can go ahead and uh, micro warp drive up to the can. You can cargo scan it if you want. You can hack it. And what you're going to get is an high sec wormhole space and null sec. I believe these are all the same, unconfirmed, but I'm pretty confident. Um, these sites are going to give you about 30 million ists, um, and they are also going to be about 30 M3 of loot. So again, the loot is from these overseers effects, which are quite heavy, and that is why we'll talk about our, our build that we use. It's a Sinesis. Sinesis has a great cargo hold, but we'll get into that in a moment. Um, 
so other than that low sec site you go in you get the can it's very similar the only difference is that low sec is scary uh but you also get better rewards for being in low sec so what are the rewards let's talk about it so in low sec you generally it's kind of we haven't found too many of them but you can generally maybe get like 50 million maybe 30 to 50 million but you also have a much better chance at the big drops so this event is kind of focused around the big drops and what those big drops are is the subverted drone again so these are going for about 100 million is or at least they previously were we might see some price drops due to the event uh whereas they were previously unavailable but these are going to be about 100 million is for every one that you get you actually get the blueprint copies i haven't found any so i don't know if it's like a one run five run ten run 50 run <laughs> you know so you might like get if you get like a five run bpc of this that's 500 million isk assumedly or close to it so definitely could be a good bit of cash there and then the other thing is these overmine implants so these are drone implants uh which it's basically these are the drone implants right um and they are assumedly going to be quite expensive i believe previously they were about 300 million east isk a pop uh they will probably go down in price a little bit but again if you want to hold on to it you can definitely get a lot of value out of that um and that is kind of what you're looking at for the data site uh loot you can also get these skins so you can get the air skins which is this is a brutix version so it's going to be this mostly white thing with this kind of green black stripe you can get the Semiotech skins, which all of these skins are new skins. All of these different varieties are totally new skins. Super awesome. Uh, and I just think this looks super cool. It's got like this leopardness to it with the caracal. And you can also get the uh, Semiotech sports skin, which is basically like the more muted version of the super liminal. It's a Corex. It's got a nice mostly white base. And then it's got some of this uh, cool color changing paint to it all right lastly let's go ahead and talk about the fits for the event we have decided to go with a senesis for both the combat and the exploration fit we'll talk about the exploration fit first this is my nullsec exploring ship um we won't go after every detail about it just kind of the the relevant things it's basically just you want to have low align time if you're going into low sec that is where we're primarily focused um you have a core scanner oh something to note is that the signatures are currently and i assume they will continue to be level three combat signatures that's right level three combat signatures for the data site and not only are they level three they actually seem to be quite hard level three scans so we have a 99 scan point strength and you could probably get away with like 95, but, but if you're less than 95, it's gonna be probably pretty hard for you to scan these down. So do be aware of that. Other than that, we just have a cloak in case we need to like cloak up somewhere. It's not a Kovops cloak because this is a Sinesis, but personally I feel Kovops cloaks are a little bit of a crutch, but that's just a personal opinion. Uh, we have a data analyzer because we have to hack the can. With a data analyzer, we have a burst jammer so that if we do get locked down or anything we can try and burst jam away we have a micro warp drive to get to the can quickly we have a cargo scan in order to scan the can to see if it's even worth our time we have some nanofibers to lower our line time a signal amplifier so that we can scan the can from further away this isn't super helpful for this event but it's just good for the fit in general and then lastly we have some hyperspatial accelerators and hyperspatial rigs bringing our warp speed up to 8.26 uh so that's kind of the fit here it works really well. I use this ship to fly around and explore in null sec a lot, and we're just using it in low sec as well. And it just, it's a really great ship, probably one of my favorite builds. Uh, other than that, we have the combat build. So this is the combat ship build that I have created. Uh, I was able to do the high sec missions solo um, you know, pretty easily. So we did it with not quite this build. It was a basically a, a version one of this build. Since then, we have made upgrades. Um, I haven't tried a low sec version of the event site yet, uh, but I feel pretty confident that this could 
probably do it. Again, these sites are very difficult. And if we can go over this build real quickly here, again, it is the Sinesis. We have opted for drone damage. So we have two drone damage amps in our lows, as well as Kaldari Navy Hornets. The reason we go Kaldari Navy Hornets is because of their really great shield resistances and they're big and beefy. And these uh, NPCs really hate drones. I cannot stress that enough. They hate drones. Um, other than that, we have two medium and still shield boosters. Uh, this is because there is a lot of DPS that comes after you very quickly, especially when that overmine hits the field. He is going to be putting out 160 DPS. Uh, you can mitigate it by, you know, sig tanking or getting going around, you know, doing things to mitigate the damage, but it is still a whole lot of freaking damage. Other than that, we have passive explosive shield hardener and kinetic shield hardener. Again, there is a lot of newts in the site. So we wanted to make a build that didn't rely at all on capacitor. That is why we also see artillery projectile weapons. Uh, you could go auto cannons, but not really. So the thing about these drones is that they like to orbit around 10 kilometers or so, um, maybe a little less, maybe a little bit more. So doing something really short range like rockets is what we originally tried or auto cannons is going to probably be a little bit too short. Uh, and the reason we decided artillery over light missiles is just for fitting purposes. Speaking of fitting purposes, this build requires a lot of CPU. In order to fit that CPU, we went with a dyad coprocessor as well as two coprocessor rigs. To fill out the rig slots, we also have a EM shield resist, which brings three out of our four resistances up to about 57%. Uh, you can also mainly, because we have a thermal resist hole here, focus on the sentinels and the forgers. So because these guys are doing thermal damage and that is kind of our, our quote unquote hole, uh, we want to kill the Sentinels, which target paint us first, and then the Forgers. And we also just threw in a auto-targeting system, not to ever use it, but by equipping it, it gives you two extra uh, targets to target. So I think that's just a little bit a nice quality of life there. Uh, other ships that we're seeing a lot of are the Kikimura. That's definitely showing good promise here. Uh, if you check out Hateless's channel or video, which I'll link down below, um, he does this with a two Kiki more key two Kiki Mores is what he eventually settled on. Uh, again, bring a friend. There's no like limit on how many people you can bring. So, you know, just get a group of your buddies, go out do these sites. That's probably going to be the best and easiest thing for you to do. Otherwise it's going to be probably pretty difficult, difficult. And you're doing a good bit of risk. The thing that I do like about this Sinesis is that it's very cheap comparatively. So if we're looking at the other Kikis or Worms, Worm is the other really great choice uh, for these sites, you are looking at a much more expensive build. So you can go out, you can try things, you can be in low sec and not be too afraid of people killing you because your ship's very cheap, right? Especially relative to the other options. And I think that's about it. Thank you so much for your time. I hope this was super um, informative for you. Again, we will always be doing these first looks whenever a new event comes out. So do be on the lookout for them. Obviously, if you like this comment, might I suggest you uh, like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great day. And I hope you get super rich from this event. We also do stream on Twitch every weekday, exploration-based content. So if you wanna see how we're doing on this event or check up for any new information, do make sure you check out the Twitch again. Links in the description. Bye-bye.